Visual Studio Express, like the, the big thing we wanted to do was ship simplicity as a feature. So instead of having 10 options to build, there's one option to build. Instead of having you know, four different ways to access data, there's one way to access data. Um, and really simplifying the experience. It's just not that hard to build good software anymore because of the tools and plumbing that Microsoft has given us. That is the honest truth. Pisses people off because developers think they're so smart and so unique and typically. Um, when really, it's an occupation that should not be limited to rocket scientist people. And Microsoft has helped facilitate that. You, you don't have to be a genius to be an application developer. Making Visual Studio Express free was probably one of the biggest challenges I've had in my career at Microsoft. I've been here for eight years and it was absolutely the biggest uphill battle. We want to democratize development, make it easy for anyone to be able to build an application in a couple hours. And that's really what our goal was. How do we make it easy to download, get the product, build the application that you're looking to build? Within two days of, download, uh, of beta one releasing, we had over 200,000 downloads of the product. 200,000 downloads is huge. Over time, I think we had in 2005, 17 million downloads of Visual Studio Express. It's, I have yet to find a, a developer tool that has been downloaded more times than Visual Studio Express. It's just become a re huge success. Anybody that's doing you know, basic HTML editing would use it. It's a free tool, you know, uh, and people love the product, which was the other thing that we saw. Probably the biggest thing that happened in Visual Studio 2005 is we, and we created these new application lifecycle management tools, Visual Studio Team System helped developers work collaboratively with their peers. We made the product a lot easier to use, you know, for Windows Forms and ASP.NET. Uh, but in addition to that, probably the biggest thing we did is we added the team system, you know, suite product of offering. So basically ALM, application lifecycle management. So source code control, the ability to do advanced development and, and you know, architecture and things like that as well. So that was a big, big, big major release for us. And then obviously 2005 with VSTS, um, you know, we brought out for the first time and really start to allow companies and development teams to kind of bridge tester and developer and kind of a whole workflow. Everybody gets to see how it's going in the progress and chain and almost like a, um, a workflow, if you will, for how the product's going. The project manager gets this uh, summary view and says, oh wow, you know, the tester's finished and the developer's finished and I now have this progress reporting. That stuff wasn't built. It was, it was a really big expansion for our product. But I think one of the biggest challenges for both Microsoft and for the developers that use Visual Studio is trying to avoid the, did anyone ever look at this before it went out the door problem? And you hear a lot of that in a lot of different areas, whether it's the help system, which has been soundly reviled, I think, probably since the dawn of time. I mean, I suspect that the manual that came with the wheel was probably, you know, you know, beaten to death with a club because it wasn't adequate. What's also interesting at the time, 2004, is when blogs started getting interesting and everybody started talking about blogging. And the, the Visual Studios team started saying, how can we incorporate um, customer feedback and do this in an open and transparent way? We started this thing called Ladybug. And what it was was giving people a direct voice into uh, filing feature requests or filing bugs against the product. And you can actually vote things up, like what is your biggest feature request that you want fixed? I think all of us that work on the project, um, you know, when something doesn't go well, take it personally. You know, it's, this is, hey, this is, we think of this as our baby. And so, um, you know, if people don't like a feature, then yeah, it's like someone stabbing you. You, you take it personally, and which is good. I mean, it's both bad because it means you don't sleep, but uh, it, it's good in the sense of, you know, we're passionate around the product. I think one of the great cultural changes that we've made, especially in the developer division over the last, you know, 10 to, to 15 years, we've spent a lot more time trying to be open and, and transparent about here's what we're doing, here's what we're working on. And so, for example, uh, you know, I didn't have a blog. None of us had blogs, didn't even know what a blog was, you know, some number of years ago. I thought, you know, what should I blog about? I finally said, you know, let me make it simple. I'm just going to tell the world that, you know, hey, I'm going to start blogging. That was sort of the theme of my first blog post. But really that's become an, an integrated part of how we uh, communicate with our development. Uh, I get generally two or three customer questions a day just coming through from my blog saying, hey, I had a gentleman in China just yesterday trying to get the C++ compiler working for a kernel driver. 
they will hook them up and answer your question. So knowing that you know I can reach you know a broad you know set of my customers around the world, no matter where they are geographically situated, and knowing that and particularly the developer audience, you know one interesting attribute about them is, a they are honest people, b they keep us honest. When you're a Windows developer, you're also a mobile developer and a web developer and a server side developer, and on and on and on. You're a cloud developer now with, with, with Visual Studio 2010. And so now, um, that was one key, key idea that we brought forward. Another uh, key idea that we brought forward is around language. We are making language improvements both in Visual Basic and C Sharp, and we are introducing new things like F Sharp. In addition to that, we've added new tooling for other platforms. So SharePoint Tools, for example, is a brand new place where we've added tools. And then we've never stopped actually innovating on the web. So all the stuff you've seen with Silverlight, MVC controllers, things like that, those will come along as well. We've also made a big investment in parallel computing. So we have runtime libraries and profilers and debuggers and tools for doing that kind of work as well. If, if I look at the next five to 10 years, I actually feel you know uh, even more excited about what Visual Studio can do. If there is a piece of code that you don't need to write that somebody else can write, then we should be able to figure out how we can you know, write that for you so that you don't have to spend your time on that. At the end of the day, you as a developer, I really want you to focus on writing the code that only you can write and not on anything else. I think we have many areas that we want to push into. We definitely want to do look at Make programmers more productive. Keep raising the abstraction level. Wouldn't it be nice if you, you know, go into the browser, click on a URL, and boom, there is a, you know, a, a development environment that you can get started with right then and there. I think there's some interesting, uh, there's some interesting stuff happening between static and dynamic programming languages and more interactive programming experiences that we're looking at. So there are many different things that we're looking to push into. Yeah. You know, I think every time you think we've got it all, you know, I just, I like to go back and look at the pictures from your family reunion from 20 years ago, right? Okay, where was your cell phone? You know, where, you know, what, you got your big honking TV, you know what I mean? Did you even have anything but a hardwired line coming? You know what I mean? Like, I think things change, you know, very rapidly with the computing power that, that comes out. This whole industry was built on constant innovation. You know, the minute we stop innovating, then, well, then we're done, right? I mean, then we can just go home. There is the opportunity to use software and technology to be able to solve problems that are unsolved. So in some sense, I feel really, really, you know, uh, thrilled about the kinds of impact that we are able to make at the, with the world at large through the work that we do in Visual Studio and .NET Framework. That's the fun thing about this industry is that you know, I can use my skill sets and apply them forward, um, but you know, the, the, it's always it's always going to be changing. There's always a bold promise with Visual Studio. It's never perfect. We all have another version coming, and its bold promise is to make things easier and better. And in its current build right now, today, we're not there yet. But by the time it ships at the end of the year, we will be. What better place to be than being sort of at the center of the universe? And I'm excited that I'm here.